Hello, golfers, and welcome back to the Second Swing Thoughts podcast. A uh, really special one today because back in Minnesota is Master Club Fitter, um, <laughs> U.S. Senior Open competitor in 2021 mm -hmm. and 2022. Um, and we'll talk about this in a little bit, but mm -hmm. the 2023 Pennsylvania Open champion, Kevin Kraft, is with us today. Winning for the old guys. <laughs> Winning for the old guys. Yeah, that's right. I mean, that's... <laughs> Now, I don't, this is, might be an insulting question, so I'm not trying to insult you. I'm going to first kind of You're not gonna clarify that. But where do you know how, like, in terms of the age where you were in the field for that tournament? I don't directly, but I'm definitely up there. Yeah. Uh, it seemed like everybody around me was, was you know, just young bucks. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. I, yeah. I imagine so. Um, yeah. I, so I... I I didn't want to outwardly ask if you were the oldest player in the field. So that's yeah, my, I don't know if I was actually of... the oldest player in the field or not, but um, I'm definitely, you know, <laughs> very much toward the tail end of, yeah. of that. Yeah. Sure, sure. Well, okay. Well, thank you for, we got a lot of stuff planned, by the way, with Kevin for this week. So um, we got more YouTube content coming, uh, potentially going to be live on YouTube this week. Or some stuff. So um, actually by this point, by the time people are listening, it's going to be about when it would be live anyway so mm, nice. uh, but a lot of stuff on youtube coming with kevin here um and then uh even moving forward as well we got it's toward that time of year in a couple months here where there's going to be new stuff for 2024 all right goodness so look out for that but uh mr Kraft, um lots going on in golf right now uh there's yeah. it's been uh it's been a fun couple weeks if you're following the fall season on tour um i know we had a really cool win this past weekend with camila fajegas yep. um and so that was really fun to to watch the way, the way he obviously has overcome so much yeah like, personally and, and professionally too and for sure kind of come back to the yeah. circles kind um, of cool. i have a, a soft spot in my heart for anybody that has fallen off and then stuck to the process and ground it out and mm -hmm. been able to to bring it back i mean my struggles with with anxiety and the yips with with the driver and all that kind of thing are pretty well documented at this point. Um, you know, he just, he just he had surgery and he's mm -hmm. struggled and I'm sure that, you know, the physical things start to become mental things. And, you know, I haven't figured out yet how much of golf is physical and how much is mental. They 90% is always being thrown around as like right. the, the, the mental side of things. I don't think that's that quite accurate, but, it's, there's definitely a, a razor wire balance between the two. And if you fall off one side, it's no good. And if you fall off the other side, it's no good. So, right. uh, you know, golf is, golf is just, it's unrelenting and not, not very nice sometimes. And Camilo is, Camilo is such a good guy. Um, quick Camilo story. Back when I was on Corn Ferry Tour, I got paired with Camilo in uh, Omaha, Nebraska. Okay. And this was the year that, that he was just shooting up like a rocket. Right. And I knew he was really young, this really young kid. Right. So I see that I'm, I'm paired with Camille and I'm like, Oh, great. You know, I've got this, I got this young kid going to be cocky and going to just be awful to play with and da 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 da. And he, <laughs> I was so stupid. Like yeah, that was that was the the dumbest thing I could have possibly thought because Camilo <laughs> was absolutely awesome, like super nice guy. Yeah. His caddy was really cool too. Liked to talk on the golf course. Man, we had so much fun playing that week, and then we got paired together a couple more times during the rest of the season. It was great. I loved getting paired with Camilo. And here I was, I had it in my head that, you know, just because he was, he was young and, and, you know, skyrocketing, that yeah. it was going to be a bad experience. And I was totally wrong. Camilo is hundred percent good people. Yeah. Uh, his brother Manny's hundred percent good people. Um, there's not too many guys on tour that I would say that I would root for more than Camilo at this particular juncture. I mean, love, love me some Max Homa too. Yeah. He also won this he week. He also won. Very cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, to see Camilo finish it off this week when he just was so close last week, you know, sometimes you get those situations where you've, you've gotten real close there and then it doesn't, mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily translate to the next week and seeing him just, you know, stick with the process, stick 
you know, what he and his coach have been working on and, and just keep going and going and then everything falls together and it's it's just awesome. Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. I'm so happy for him. Very cool to see. Um, I know aside from, you know, his his story, his mm -hmm. his background, both again, personally and professionally, um, obviously the his foundation, I believe it's um, Maya's Miracles mm -hmm. um, is, you know, having lost their their child at a very yeah. young age. And, yeah. Um, and then now trying to kind of fund families that might be in a similar scenario. So that's very cool yeah. um, for Camilo and his and his family. Um, but then, you know, outside of all of that, from us at Second Swing, in our perspective, very cool to see the very kind of eclectic mix of clubs that he plays too. From he's got like M2 uh, five wood in the bag. He's got uh, I think also back an M4 fairy wood two TSI three driver. I mean, he's got. The Shrixon combo irons. Yeah. He's got every brand basically that you can think of in golf off the top of your head. So, um, I, very cool. And yeah. I believe the winner of this event also got an invite to Augusta. So or will. So. Oh, that's awesome. Um, so really cool for him. And yeah. I think it was a, the way he had been trending the last year or so. You kind of tell he was one of those guys that was going to win soon. Yeah, the the fall finish is so important too. My goodness, like we all think, okay, well, you know, all the big guys aren't playing, so you know what. How interesting yeah. can it be? But these are the guys that are these are the guys that are struggling for their lives, right? They are right. fighting tooth and nail to try to make sure that they've got some place to play mm -hmm. next year. And this time of year is super, super exciting. Right. And you know, he was on he was definitely on the outside looking in two weeks ago. Um, great to see it. Yeah. Great to see it. Yep, absolutely. Um, well, speaking of winning golf tournaments, I kinda wanna get to um, back to the pen open that we mm. referenced earlier so um this is not the first time you've won that event either no uh, so you won is... it back in 2018 yeah setting course records you know um <laughs> again was that lancaster is that right last year that last was. time was at lancaster country and club then... they'll be hosting the women's uh women's u.s open again in uh 2024 okay so that's maybe my cool. course record will fall. Yeah, well, it's okay. I don't know. That's it's okay. Si that 64 was that's 64, right? Yeah, that's it's only 600. Tough course though. Yes, tough course. <laughs> it's, it's been around since 1900. So yeah. for it to be, to be for it to be 64 was was shocking. That I had does no say, idea when it happened. That, I mean, that was gonna be so many other courses you think of that are you know difficult and have hosted big events have lower course records than yeah. Lancaster does. Yeah. Um, so, and then this year was York Country Club. Yes, Country Club of York. Yep. Um, nine under in three days, par 70? Par 70. They took okay. two par fives and turned them into two par fours. Okay. So, and legitimately, it was the right call. I mean, usually I'm not for that kind of thing, but I mean, I was hitting nine irons in, so oh, that's, yeah. that's kind of par four ish. Yeah. Honestly. Probably in the 450 range, 60. Yeah, range. I think number nine was maybe. 480 something okay and you went up a hill and then if you got it all the way to the top then it could really roll out so okay yeah yeah um but nonetheless you were the, the champion you are the champion um i have your watch in the bag here and actually i, I brought it up because <laughs> because we well at second swing we how know much we, of a running joke is my what's in the bag in this it, company seriously like it's for me and our team kind of a, a large one <laughs> Um, because we <laughs> check it, in on it. it should be. We check in on it now at this point. It's like every few months, maybe, maybe a couple months where we kind of, and it, there's always, you know, a lot of things. That there's, th there's, uh, there's things in motion. So the yeah. reason I, I'm bringing this up is because I want to see what's changed since then. Okay. Now, when was this actually, when did you actually, what was the date, I guess? Of the, it was early August. Okay. So this yeah. is now we're talking about three months, three months, a lot three can months? happen in three okay. months. Okay. So three yeah. months ago. <laughs> You had the Aerojet driver. This is the, the still the 50th anniversary version. Still got it. Uh, okay, so that's uh, that's still in the bag. Yep. TaylorMade burner mini, kind of two wood slash driver there. Still in the bag. Still in the bag. That things that, that as much as I've tried to get a three wood that could really do what I need it to do when my mind starts getting scrambled, um, I, I just can't imagine that there's anything out there that's that can okay. do what this club does yeah. okay i do remember when we first you can if you haven't yet watch it on youtube when we tested the burner mini and the string report for the first time and you were very very impressed from the get-go so <laughs> not a surprise to see that in the yeah. bag and still in there uh, okay now next cobra king tech hybrid or hybrids two and four yep still in the bag okay. yep the iron set now so in the past it was a cobra 
King Utility Iron and the 5 Iron, and then the 6 and 7 Iron were the Cobra King CB, and then the 7 through pitch was the the MB. Okay, little change. Okay. Um, I changed shafts. Okay. I went from steel fiber I-110Xs to I-95Xs. Okay. Reason being, my golf swings changed a little bit over the last 24 months, and I wasn't seeing quite as much peak height as I wanted, so my landing angle wasn't quite as good as I wanted it to be. Um, so I switched shafts going a little lighter to try yeah. and get a little more spin and a little more height. And what I was hoping for, I didn't know if it was going to actually play out this way, was I was hoping I would get a little bit extra speed. And that would allow me to not lose my numbers based on height and spin. So it okay. played out perfectly. Yeah. Um, so I didn't have any adjustment period at all, switching shafts, which is really cool. Um, the other piece that changed, I did change the five iron from the UT to the uh, forge tech. Okay. Um, look, the UT did exactly what I wanted it to. It behaved itself very, very nicely. It did everything I wanted. But aesthetically, that top line was a little thick. Yeah. So... Um, I decided when I switched up, I would go try the, the Forge Tech 5 iron, and that's worked out quite okay. well. Okay. Yeah. How about the, the, they probably have to feel a little bit similar, right? The two, because the, they're kind of similarly built, those two clubs. Yeah. Um, I didn't really notice much feel change okay. there. Maybe just a touch softer in the Forge Tech, honestly. Okay. Um, I've, I've messed with that club a little bit in the past, so I was okay. familiar with it. Yeah. So you had Jaws, Raw Wedges. Those are gone. Those are gone, yeah. So it was interesting, too. I kind of figured the short game part would yeah, be... Yeah, yeah, that's that's usually what goes. So <laughs> I, I'd done beautifully well with those Jaws Raw. I love the look, I love the feel, I love the sound. Everything was cool. And then all of a sudden, for about a, six, seven weeks before the PA Open, um, it just went off the rails. Like, yeah. things just weren't good. So I got a set of Cobra Wedges trying to be as, as good as I can be to, you know, I've been on Cobra staff for eight years, so, you know, I try to play as much Cobra stuff as I possibly can. Um, and, man, that wedge just did not work for me. I really wanted it to. They were gorgeous. They looked great. I, mean, I just couldn't get the short game dialed in. You, you, can't, mm -hmm. you, can't be, you can't be struggling with short game. You just can't be. So I put the, I put the, the Jaws Raws back in the bag, win with them, yeah. and then they're gone. <laughs> okay. So uh, right now, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going in 2024, but right now I've bought uh, some MG4s. Okay. Taylor made MG4s. Yeah. Look, feel, sound again. They came out and I went, ah, oh, yeah, they're awesome. And then <laughs> the, the, that face is so rough. Mm. And so I changed up my lofts. Okay. Uh, I'm now at a. I'm, I'm playing the gap wedge in the in the CB. In the MB, set. Okay. Sorry, yeah. And then uh, 5662. So I bent a okay. little more aloft into the, the CB gap wedge, or yeah. sorry, MB gap wedge. I don't know why I keep calling it CB. And then uh, 5662. Reason being on that one is I'm trying to get better at the shorter yardages. Um, if I'm going to be playing in senior stuff, who knows if that's going to happen or not. That's another story. Um, the courses tend to be a little shorter. So if I'm banging drives out there and I'm having 60 yards left in, yeah, that's yeah. not easy for me. I get handcuffed at 60 yards. So I figure go to 62 uh, degrees aloft, I can make more of a swing, be more there aggressive, and hopefully be better. So we'll see whether that works out. I, like I will also be buying a 52 and a 58 to see whether that works out. Okay. I don't know. I like it. Well, still, a man with a plan nonetheless. So It's sort of a plan. A man with a, it's, a sketch. It's... Yeah, it's, I'm still throwing spaghetti at the wall and hoping it all sticks. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so that's where we get to putter then. Speaking of throwing spaghetti at the wall yeah, and hoping it yeah. sticks. So the PLD answer was the putter. I Actually, I think the better question here is um, how many putters have you had since then? Oh, in the I, bag? Uh, well, so I traded in the PLD about two weeks after I won with it. Somebody just bought it. So somebody's got a, a winning pedigree wow. putter. I just didn't. <laughs> lo I just didn't love the feel. I just didn't love the feel. I am not good with milled putters. I okay. prefer something with an insert. Yeah. So, let's see. Oh, that's 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 a terrible question. How many have I been? How many have I used since? Then? Why is it a terrible question? Because the number's probably pretty big. That's I mean, what, that's I, kind I, of why I, I asked it. If I think back, 
Um, oh, I've probably picked up and messed with and retained or gotten rid of six, wow. seven putters since then. <laughs> That's a, that is a big number. I traded in a whole bunch of stuff that I had sitting around. So yeah. I had this massive kind of war chest of, of, of store credit. And I started going through some putters. I did pick up another ping. I picked up the, uh, the previous gen answer, the 2021 okay. answer. Yes. Yep. It's got that nice soft face. I have the 2021 of hardwood really of that yeah. of that so, series, and I so, love it. Very soft insert. Same look. Yeah. Definitely different feel. So that's in the mix now. Okay. Um, in the bag currently, and has been in the bag now for a solid, at least two months anyway. That's that's a long time for it's, for for Kevin Kraft. It, it is. <laughs> it is. It's embarrassing, but it's true. Um, a Odyssey. 5k number seven okay it's big yeah but That's it's the, uh, good larger and kind of we've mallet. spent a lot of time at the store david Coe and i and james park and i looking at what my stroke does why it does what it does and what works well with that and they all are adamant that the 1k is the best putter that they've ever seen me have okay has not stopped me from getting other options. Oh, I would um, not expect. I have a. To, yeah. I, I would got not a, that too. I got a, uh, a my TP custom, tailor made blade. Okay. I got a. Oh, I just recently picked up a uh, an even roll. Looks yeah. kind of like the seven. Um, I picked up one of the new tailor made spiders. Mm -hmm. Really like the way that looks. Yeah. Really like the way that feels. Is there, a, is there a world where you'd put two putters in the bag? And, no. Okay. I don't have enough, <laughs> I had to check. I don't, I had I don't check. have enough room for what I got. <laughs> I need 16 clubs. Hey, USGA, can you give me a couple more clubs here? Um, yeah, that's never going to happen. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm struggling at the top of the bag uh, because I carry four wedges. And what I found was last event that I played on Senior Players Tour, uh, par fives at like 540 are great as long as they're downwind. I can get there without too much trouble with a solid drive and my two hybrid. Yeah. But you give me a flipped wind back into the wind, especially on a course like we were at the News Country Club in, in Clayton, North Carolina, where it goes up to the greens. I can't get there with the, with the two hybrid. So uh, there will be a very decent uh, opportunity to be adding a three wood into the bag um, and this is not to take out the, the burner mini? Or it is not to take out the burner okay. mini. The burner mini is, is going to stay. It, that, that, what that club does for me mentally is so important. I cannot take it out okay. of the bag. Um, the question is going to be, am I going to carry the two hybrid? Am I going to carry a three wood? Uh, my two hybrid 16 degrees, but I can swing a, a fairway wood longer you know yeah, yeah faster yeah. so um what i do have to ask because i've seen it even like lilia vu won this weekend on the lpga mm -hmm. she's got two apex uw's in the bag mm, yeah a, i think one's playing at 16 or 17 and one's at 21. yeah have you considered that club have you tried that one i'm just this is just merely a, a tossing an idea out there because it to me in the the when, when i've tested it myself and others here at second swing it's very fast, fast like a fairy wood. Yeah. But it's obviously a lot more compact and appears like a hybrid. I haven't mainly because up till now, and this is maybe me just, you know, losing my mind, but I've always been happy with, with my two hybrid. Mm -hmm. Like it's done what I've needed to do. And there's, there's times where I've been able to absolutely bomb it. But when I'm trying to swing extra hard, like, you know what it's like, if, you, oh, if yeah. you're swinging hard, you're probably going to produce more spin unless you catch it absolutely just dead perfect. Yeah. So it, that kind of works against what I want to try and do. Yeah. So I messed with the 17 degree to see kind of, you know, what it did. Yeah. It's a great golf club. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not switching out of the Cobra. I, okay. I, I just legitimately, yeah. I need as much Cobra product in that bag as possible. Um, I have to make a couple exceptions just mm -hmm. based on 
you know what I personally need to look and look at and, and see. It's and like feel. The, the look of Cobra clubs. Yeah, I mean yeah. They, they've they've been fantastic. The, the hybrids, I'm not a huge fan of hybrids. I yeah. don't necessarily love looking at them, but the, the two and four hybrid that I've been carrying now for, you know, since 2021 are just. <laughs> I can't get rid of them. They yeah. do what I want them to do. I just need another club that I can have another, you know, 10 to 15 yards out of. Yeah. So, and it will be, it will be situational. So, you know, we're going to have uh, some new Cobra stuff coming out after the, you know, after the beginning of the year. Um, this will maybe be the first time I've been able to legitimately put a, a, a Cobra in the bag, though. I have um, another one that I'm, I'm going to be messing with here in the meantime. Mm. Okay. All right. Uh, just, I was just spitting an idea out yep, there. Yep. Yep. Um, one thing I also wanted to ask, you, you referred to it was the, the, the Senior Players Tour. Yeah. Um, I know we talked about that very kind of briefly last time you were here. Yeah. Um, you know, I know you've played a few of the events now. How is that going? And, I mean, well, what's, that, what's that experience like? The experience has been phenomenal. Yeah. Um, fledgling Tour, obviously there's some, some ups and downs, but I haven't been paid yet from the last event. Mm. Um, that's worrisome <laughs> a little um, bit especially since it was a pretty good check um don't know what's going on there um no well, we hope it works out huh I, yeah absolutely uh my, so it was supposed to be one event a month is that the deal yeah so that's how kind of how it was how it was initially you know proposed um they were originally then going to do not do November and December due to Q school and guys prepping and, sure, and sure, that sure. kind of thing, which made sense. Talked about possibly doing one in December. Uh, I guess that one was was kind of probably not going to happen, but they were supposed to pick up in, in like January or something like that. And um, what we were told in North Carolina was that the the top sixty guys from the first three events it was going to be almost be like a almost like a, a qualifying event. Yeah. Um, the guys that were supporting the tour early on were going to get automatic, uh, you know, they don't have to worry about getting in. They'll just be thrown into the mix. They were going to cut player field down to 78 players, play 78 guys, and, you know, they'd have 18 guys from the outside to, to play each week, you know, uh, available. And it, it sounded so great. It sounded so great. Like, I couldn't tell you how, how like, I've had so much fun this fall being able to do that and playing against, you know, full-time playing guys and, and mm -hmm. guys that I, I've known from back in the day. And everything. Yeah, so, sure. You know, it's been a, it was a wonderful, wonderful experience, and it breaks my heart to think that this is probably now dead in the water. Uh, I don't know if they can come back from from where they are right now. Mm. The, the I'm on a text thread that hasn't been particularly positive <laughs> ah. over the last little bit. Um, you know, seemed like good people involved and, and you know, the, 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 the overall sense of things was very positive. But I've been on the receiving end of this before where uh, I've hooked my, my card up to something that ends up being nothing yeah. at all. Uh, you know, I had uh, Pro Tour Hawaii way back when it was two thousand maybe 99 something like that 2000 2001 maybe somewhere in that area you know sent a bunch of money over to put, hold a place for for pro tour hawaii and, and then the guy ran away with all the money mm. so i don't know uh seems like we're gonna give it about another week and yeah and hope that uh things get done the i still have some hope i mean i reached out to the guy uh about I don't know, I guess two weeks ago, and he answered his phone. And he's like, yeah, sorry, there were some issues. Everything's going off to the to the accountant for tax purposes, and they're, they should be mailed sometime after the 13th of October. Okay, well, that's it's late, but that's okay. You know, no big deal. And then nothing and nothing mm. and nothing. So um, one of the guys that's been involved is a friend, um, and I've played with some over the last little bit and I've known known for a while. He's been sending updates, so you know, we're not like totally shut out. Yeah, there's he was involved some in the tour. He's a little bit so. he's mystified too, I think. So um 
I well, hope, that's, uh, I, I hope it can be. I hope it can be salvaged because fun concept. Oh goodness, yeah. I would love. To, I would love to yeah. do. It. There's nothing like that for for seniors. Yeah, you know, that you is... got you got Champions Tour, but you know, it was hard enough to get on Champions Tour. You know, last year. The reason I'm not even going this year is because they cut it down to they cut it down from from five guys to four, mm -hmm. and the Mondays from four guys to three. Yeah. So, you know, it's not that I don't want to do it. It's not that I wouldn't do it, but it's a lot of money, and you know. I don't know. Uh, maybe I should have. Maybe I should have taken a run at it this year because I was. I've been playing good, but um, just couldn't commit the the yeah. the resources. That is. Uh, it's probably worth reminding again for the viewers and listeners. Like we've talked about it before, but like there's a glamorous side of pro golf <laughs> that is what you see on TV. Is there? I haven't seen that side. <laughs> yeah, this is yeah. <laughs> You know, there's there's that side. There's the, the TV, and there's you know the big sponsorship money and the gigantic purses and, and all that whole thing. And then there's the the I guess the grinded out side that is can be a serious struggle for a lot of people. Yeah. And um, so there's uh, this is kind of one a one kind of lens to look at at yeah. through. Um, yeah. So I know you've been through all kind of phases of of that side of pro golf. So um, and this is someone who's obviously got a lot of you know accomplishments in pro golf two-time pen open winner um won a bunch of other events qualified for u.s senior open twice um got some game but yeah I it's can, just I can, I can play on my day yeah i just don't I, know when that day is going to be for what it's worth the one time i played with you <laughs> well I've, I've played 18 holes with you and i haven't seen you make a, make a bogey so well, yeah, um, well, there's that bogeys happen i don't know if they do for you i haven't seen it myself yeah so. to, don't worry <laughs> let's play again you'll find out <laughs> um all right moving on to new clubs to review that mm -hmm. to review that since we've been uh, yeah. together yeah um it's been a not a super busy summer but we've had enough to go over things because we were we were been, we were fortunate enough to go through the t-series irons mm -hmm. right away when we had the, mm -hmm. we had the chance kind of back in july um those have been phenomenal yeah uh, i don't think those have those have really high expectations and they've met them i think so yes yeah. absolutely um got some more stuff that we got our hands on are now in the bays since then. So starting with Callaway, they had the Apex Pro 24 series. It's new irons, new utility wood, um, utility iron in there too. Mm -hmm. So um, you've had a chance, I'm sure you've hit them, I'm sure you've mm -hmm. fit customers. Um, your feedback on that series so far, now that we're, I think, a couple months in. It's it's a little different uh, mm -hmm. for Callaway. They they changed up the, the aesthetic some which uh, I'm not really a huge fan of. Callaway's always had a shape that I've, I've just absolutely loved. And uh, the new ones are, they're roundier and they're taller in the crotch and it just doesn't strike me as as well as some of the others. And mm. that's, well, that's just a personal thing, right? Yeah. Uh, there, that, that doesn't mean that anybody else is gonna think the same thing. Um, I didn't necessarily love the look. Um, Feel and performance. Um, I haven't done a lot of fitting with them. Mm. Um, a little bit, not a not a ton. But it is a players' club, so you got to figure. You right, know, right. Is, it's every, it's everybody already gets, talking to a smaller percentage. Yeah, of, everybody of gets the jacked up about the about the uh, the new players' clubs coming out, but it's such a small percentage. It's yeah. such a small crowd that we're that we're going to be fitting to. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't get a ton of those people in. Um, I think legitimately, it's going to take me. A little more time to to really see what my overall take is. Yeah. Um, they've had some issues, I guess, with the 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 demo clubs that that went out. They're supposed to be replacing those. Uh, the back badge was was affecting the negatively affecting the sound, mm. and the sound was was definitely an issue. Mm. So uh, I'm looking forward to that being sure. straightened out and and giving it a, you know, a legitimate chance. Um, cause that the apex line historically has been, I mean, you know, awesome. just Fantastic. phenomenal. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I am really looking forward to seeing what the new regular apex looks like when it comes out. Cause we got the pro, we got the MB yeah. and, and, and the CB. Um, and I guess there's now going to be a, a TCB, mm -hmm. uh, which I thought was going to be the CB, but you know, whatever. Um, but they didn't come out with the regular one and the regular one is, is, such a great golf club for so many. Oh, people. I know that thing's been a winner. lot of people I mean, into it. You go back, 
how many generations has they had? I think 16 was the 16, original, 19, yeah. 21. Yeah. Had so many winners there. Yeah. So uh, yeah. you can only, you know, imagine that the next one's going to be really good as well. Yeah, I mean, it's like a, it's like a P790, yeah. right? The, the Apex and the P790. But I, I mean, in a lot of respects, I think the Apex has historically been a better feeling club, softer sounding club mm -hmm. than P790. Maybe you don't agree, but that's always my interpretation of, of I guess, those two head to head. So you're right. I'm very much looking forward to that, yeah. that yeah. Apex iron. Um, also, we had Mizuno come out with kind mm -hmm. of another niche uh, product or products, again, kind of aimed at the maybe higher swing speed or, or skilled players. Mizuno STG, mm -hmm. the, the driver at 440cc, and then the Ferrywood. Uh, your first impressions there, we did some testing. We have uh, reviews on the YouTube channel for these. Um, what did you think, uh, what do you have you, what do you think of those so far as you've seen them and hit them and so hit them? I'm I'm really quite impressed, actually. Um, I love the workability, you know, with the with the rails in the mm -hmm. in the back of the driver. Um, the look is really good. It's a it's a nice, solid, clean look, very appealing. Mizuno keeps getting better and better and better with their woods. Oh uh, yeah, they need more recognition for for what they've got. It can't say legitimately that. People just come rushing in to say, hey, can I try the new Mizuno driver? Right. But you throw it into the mix and nobody goes, oh, I don't want to hit that. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, it's nice. The shape is really good. Um, it's low spin. The driver is definitely low spin. It was for me. Um, I thought the sound was good. I thought ball speeds were pretty good. Uh, the fairway wood's phenomenal. Yeah. The fairway wood is so good. And the, the one thing I noticed in the fairway wood that Soul plate looks a little familiar. Mm. It uh, it's got the titanium soul plate. I, mm -hmm. I've seen that before, yeah. and it works. And it it's worked in, in other models. But did you look at that shape? Yeah. That shape. You put it down, and you just go, oh, that's, mm -hmm. yeah. You can tell I'm so aesthetically driven. <laughs> yeah, you are. Yeah, it's like, but I put that three wood down, and I went, oh, this thing looks amazing. And then the sound and the feel are, are equal. To the to the looks, I was really really blown yeah. away. Yeah, it's all. I'm I'm wondering if and when. I, I imagine it's going to happen. Is Mizuno is going to take that kind of leap in the driver category? I mean, they have taken leaps, but mm -hmm. I'm saying, it, like for example, Strixon in the iron category mm -hmm. has taken that leap. I think yeah. where yeah. people are clamoring for them in the fitting bay, and I know even among our fitters here, um, one of our fitters did a survey recently, and we got some results there, and Strixon was ranked very highly in with the ZX-5 and the ZX-7, you know, among our fitters. And so mm -hmm. it seems like Mizuno is, is on the path to getting there. It just seems like one of these years or maybe the next two, two releases, whatever it might be, they're going to make a breakthrough and get up there. And, yeah, and I could definitely see that happening. I mean, I remember back in the day when I was, when I was teaching and fitting up in, in Harrisburg, you know, Mizuno, everything was blue. Right? Yeah, they had a blue collar. I couldn't even sell, I couldn't even sell blue drivers to Penn State fans, right? Uh, <laughs> it, it just... It was it was crazy, and then as soon as they changed the color scheme, they got it's like they got more legitimacy, yeah. right? And it's just gotten better and better and better. They've always had good tech. They've always had really good performing stuff. It's just it's not been, yeah, you know, it's just not it's not been something that somebody's been been actively. Right. Well, and really I do remember for. the like the ST one eighty maybe was that the blue one that was like they had these weight. Um, tracks on the yep. sole that were just yep. so like cluttered and it was a little bit kind of I don't want to say junky but it was a little it was it was a lot to look at yeah and the way they've especially with the STG and this one it's so much more cleaned up yes on absolutely the sole. like it's so clean you have the weight tracks a ton of adjustability yep. but it's not thrown completely in your face when you no it's not up. and and that's that tech's really great um, I'm Definitely interested to see, you know, we, we get these things in the fall, right? And it's, how's it then going to compare with the, with new, the, stuff. With the new yeah. stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Did you see what, did you see the... the there was some uh, new entrance to the conforming list today. Yes, there were. The day we record here on November yes, 13th. Yeah. Uh, so 
I don't know what we're at liberty to say and not say at this point. Yeah, but, I didn't bring uh, any of it up because I don't know. Yeah, but um, <laughs> we will we will certainly anything. learn in due time about yeah. some of that stuff. But I mean, the cat's out of the bag. If you want to know, go to my golf spy. Yeah, exactly, uh. <laughs> exactly. Uh, you'll get a few details there yeah. just by looking at some black and white images. So, yeah. um, lastly, you mentioned you have one of these Taylor Made Spider Tour. Yeah. Uh, new addition to the Spider family, long running. Uh, you know, almost a prestigious spider family, if you will, because for a long time, those spider putters have been kind of the high MOI, you know, kings of, of putters in, in the industry. Yeah. So uh, the spider tour family now, um, I don't which model did you say you had? Just V3, okay. I think. It's got little little wings on the on the edge. It's got the white. Oh, uh, yeah. It's yep. got the white sight line with the, okay. with the black line. Yep. So the thing about spiders, if you, you think about spiders in the in the in the in nature, right? Okay. When you see baby spiders, there's there's a whole mess of spiders, right? Mm -hmm. What do we always have in our stores? We always have a mess of spiders in our stores. Yeah. And they keep coming out with more more and more spiders. Yeah. And up until now, I've really been kind of anti-spider. It's just not been really my thing. Uh, but this one is really good. Like, yeah. The feel off the face is that softer feel, mm -hmm. which I really like, and the the, the look and the, the color and the finish and yeah, I mean I was I was, they had me at hello, they had you at hello yeah, yeah. I think uh, there's and it actually it was funny that we saw Scotty Scheffler trying one of these for mm -hmm. a brief time I don't know what his he, was his was this was different, different because it had like yeah. a it was a milled face yeah, milled no face. insert yeah. Yeah. Um, that seems to be a personal preference for him yeah. But nonetheless, like, th for the spider family to do as well as it has for the longest time, uh, Brian Harmon has that gigantic block of metal oh my at the end of his putter shaft. That thing's huge. It, uh, it worked for him yeah. to win a major. Yeah. So they're doing something right there. And they've kind of always been sort of, almost, I don't want to say ahead of the game, but their high MOI movement in putters mm -hmm. is certainly there. I mean, we can talk a little bit about lab right now if we want to yeah. and how yeah. they got some momentum. Yeah, Camille Vajegas, we talked about yep. him earlier. Yep. Lucas Glover, I mean, Adam um, Scott, Adam Scott, yeah. the, the broomstick, uh, you know, for or template for putting yeah. um, is, is growing, and cer certainly the high MOI putter movement is. I mean, if you watch, if, if if you've watched the video with the revealer on how a conventional putter moves on this thing versus the lab putter, it it has to make you scratch your head. Yeah, well, I mean, putting. I had, I had a directed force for a little bit. The problem was, I, I I didn't have any problem with the look, right? It's big. It's, it's a unique it's, look. It is. It is. Yeah. I am, you know, as aesthetically driven as I am, I I didn't have a problem with it, um, but whenever I took it out on the golf course, I practiced a lot with this thing, and I just missed everything right. And I'm actually mm. blaming the grip, because it does on. line. It don't that, they align it, has it that weird? Forward pressed grip. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And so I want to try another one. Spoiler alert, Kevin's going to try another putter. <laughs> um, <laughs> goodness. Uh, I want to try the link. Uh, yeah. I, I do want to try the link. It's it's the most, to me, it's the most palatable looking of the of the group. And it has that same torque balance that, okay. that the other ones have. Yeah. So, uh, and I'm sure they're going to continue to to innovate and bring out other models. Mm -hmm. I mean, they've got three right now. So uh, my guess is that yeah, they'll They are they'll, definitely pushing more. the envelope. Oh, yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. So. With that said, we've got kind of one more segment here, if you will, mm. and that is going to be, uh, I have found three questions from mm. our YouTube comments that I personally couldn't answer, uh, but I think you can as someone who is a professional player and a master club fitter and has all the insights and also is a club junkie. So Hit me. Um, I've got three of them here. The first one okay. is from um, awood9214 asking about gaining some speed. Mm. Said, in your professional opinion, Slash experience, what is a better way to generate ball speed? Is it strength training or more so increasing body torque and flexibility? As someone who is working on gaining that speed, I know you've gone through some uh, super speed and yep. some things like that, yep. and you're still doing really well. I mean, you're still, I, when, you can, when you're swinging, I mean, you're over 160 ball speed, 165. You've yeah. been close to 170 I've, I've been recently. Over, I've been over 170. 170. Not, not recently. Not recently. It's been... Well, it's been it's been six weeks probably since I've seen one. I mean, six weeks to me is I mean recent. It is ish. reasonably. But anyway, yeah. you've got speed still. So, yeah. how would you uh, if 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 let's say you're trying to 
teach someone how to gain more speed in a, in a short amount of time? Is it a strength training thing or do you want to get the flexibility and the torque going? So I, I think if you're looking for return on investment time-wise, um, doing something like the super speed sticks or the stack system, mm -hmm. I think those things are going to return as as fast as anything. Um, I'm a bit of a gymophobe. Um, I just don't go. I like that. You know <laughs> what? I, I'm going to adopt that. I, I that just word for go. myself. Yeah, yeah I, I just don't go. So um, I picked up eight miles, eight point two miles an hour of club head speed in ten weeks using the super speed sticks. Uh, at six minutes a day, three days a week. All right now, I have some advantages that not everybody has. I have a bay that I can then swing drivers in, yeah. and, and that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, I mean, I stayed committed to it, and and I only did the first three protocols. So. Uh, and then I decided I didn't want to keep doing it while I was while I was playing tournaments. So I haven't done them since. Like I've maintained. It's, but you've it's maintained. Stayed. It. Yeah, yeah. So you gained. You said. And I'm, I've actually picked up. So I went in ten weeks. I went from 104 to 112 too. It just shocks me that 104 was the fastest I was at that point. Um, but I've gotten since then within within the last year I've gotten up to 115.6. So and this is we should clarify. I mean, this is a gymophobe. So this isn't. Yeah, I'm not working out. This isn't through working out. Twelve ounce curls is about as good as I get. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> so it can be done. I mean, if you it can if, be done. If Absolutely. You, if, if what's holding Absolutely. you back is going to the to the gym and yeah. trying to do a workout to gain your speed, not necessarily the route you have to take to gain eight miles an hour of club speed. So working right sided, um, left sided without, you know, with, with no resistance. Um, and then I would highly recommend after doing sessions, you know, going out and, and trying to hit driver hard. Um, yeah. That's what I did each time was I did the, the speed sticks and then I'd hit 30 drivers after it. The first five feel crazy because you've been swinging with no resistance and then all of a sudden there's this huge club head on the, on the end of the stick. Right? right. And it just feels like this caveman club. Uh, but <laughs> Once, once you get feel for that, uh, the, the the other twenty five swings can can you know give you some idea. Right. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's good. I uh, I think it's almost it's funny because when you're at least when I was a kid, when I was learning how to swing, it was always about like control your swing, like mm. just hit the ball straight. Yeah. You know, I think there's a shift in philosophy happening where oh, it's it's when happened. you're a kid nowadays. Let's say you're a you know a, a young teenager or even younger than that. I think they're you're being told swing as hard as you can yep. now. Hundred percent. As you grow, you can you can hone the, the I was technique of that in. To hit it here and hit it here and hit it here, you can't do that anymore. Yeah. Like building speed is building speed later is harder than building speed early. Right. So if you get a if you get a junior player, you want them swinging hard. Yeah. And fast, and then we'll figure everything out from there. Right. Yeah. That, it's. That's how golf is different nowadays. Uh, yes. It's crazy. Totally different. Um, all right. Next one here from One Average American. Hmm? Uh, selling, selling him or so, herself short, I think, yeah. being an average American. Um, I have a serious gapping problem at the top of my bag. My average numbers with good strikes are 7 iron carries 162, 6 iron carries 165, 5 iron carries 169. Then my 4 hybrid jumps up to 208. Hmm. So 7 iron below... And below my average is a nice eight to eleven yard gaps with carry distance. So I'm thinking of just replacing my five and six iron with a five hybrid that carries 185 ish and calling it good. Or hear me out now, he says, getting a whole new blended T series setup. So huh. this is a 16 handicap. Is that overkill? Well, this may come from one average American, but uh, I think it's a pretty exceptional question, really. <laughs> um, yeah, the gaps worry me at the you know the. Five, six, seven. Yeah, that's three, that's tight. It's three that's clubs tight. doing the same thing. Yeah, and I wonder whether it's a whether there's a trajectory component in there. I would imagine um, so. That's you know, it could be ball speed too. Though I mean, if he's hitting seven iron, one hundred and sixty-two yards, that's not slouchy at all. So no. Um, so I definitely wonder if there's a trajectory component because that oftentimes, if we're not getting enough enough trajectory. It could also be a ball speed thing. Like seven iron could be that happy place where, you know, getting really good ball speed and then the misses start coming in a little bit yeah. at six and five iron. Um, 
Yeah, that's a tough one to just say, hey, you should really do this. Um, you know, the, the simple, if, if you love your golf clubs, then, you know, try a five hybrid and see if that, see if that works. And yeah. there's also some really good six hybrids out there. Ping makes phenomenal yeah. five and six hybrids. So yeah. um, if we can create better ball speed, if we can create better trajectory, we should see, you know, that gap coming in there. I don't, I don't want to see less than, you know, 10 yards really right. bet between clubs. Otherwise you've, you've got something that's just weighing the bag down. Mm -hmm. right? Good for, you know, chasing right. off snakes. There's always, the desert, but, each club uh, in the bag has to have a purpose. Exactly. AKA a rough carry yardage that exactly. hits. That's and different you, than the rest of yeah, them. And if you like hybrids, by all means, like let's, let's give that a whirl. On the other side of that is, you know, if you want to go with, with, with a combo set, and you're comfortable with something like a, a T200 in the lower irons and T350 yeah. in, the, in the, the upper irons, um, that's a good way to go. I mean, if you look, 90% of Titleist staffers play a blended set. Yeah. Um, and it's all about trajectory. I tell my customers all the time, you know, I, I have the, on TrackMan, I have the visual of TPI up. It's their, it's their, right. their, uh, their hole that they've got out there. I say, if we were standing in Carlsbad on this actual range, they'd be talking to you about trajectory and landing angle yeah. and, and all that. So um, get some place where you can try some things out. Yep. Okay. Don't just throw money at it without, you know, trying something out. Um, if you do want to throw money at it without trying something out, do the hybrid thing first. Uh, yeah, because, I agree there's, because there's less investment there. Right. Um, but it could work out either way, not knowing all the dynamics. I don't know exactly which way I would go. Um, but you know, if you're, you're jonesing for a new set of golf clubs, well, yeah, guess what? Right. That, that could be a good way to go. If you yeah. like what you've got, but you just don't like your gaps, you know, throw a hybrid or two in there and let's right. see if that. Cause even that I'm looking, I mean, I'm looking at this, you could, there's a seven iron carrying 162, the six irons 165, the five irons 169. I don't know if it's like maybe, you know, you strengthen the five iron a little bit and then you grab. But does that hurt the trajectory then? It might. It yeah. might. These yeah. are things like we don't yeah. know exactly right. how high this person's hitting the ball um, or exactly what iron set they have now. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe if they already have a strong lofted set, you can't really yeah. go any stronger or, yeah. you know. So there's there's other questions to be had, but yeah. I do like the, the hybrid idea of just adding a hybrid yeah. in there. Yeah. Let's, Probably let's, going to go higher. Yeah. Um, and if, if, and if, if a five hybrid works help. and it, it does give you, you know, 180, then let's throw a six iron in there and see if we can't get the... You know, if, let's say 185 on the on the five yeah. hybrid, and if we can get 172 out of the out of a six hybrid, then you're golden. Then, yeah. Then then that that all plays out. Mm -hmm. So exactly. Yeah. Um, all right, last one, and this is a fun topic that I know all the fitters here enjoy. Um, so I think you will too. So we've had Larry on here asked asked about this exact topic. Um, J Clark 12 says, uh, most of my set is tailor-made except my wedges, which are Vokies. Should I get tailor-made wedges in the bag? So everything is one brand. If you want to have all of one brand, then you should get some tailor-made wedges. Uh, what I tell my customers is that if they want to go all one brand, I am game. I will, I will maximize whatever brand they want yep. uh, and make it as good as I possibly can for them. However, unless we are being paid hundreds of thousands of dollars. Like some people are. Like some people are. And we watch on television every yep. week. To say, yeah, this is the best thing I could possibly play. The likelihood of one brand performing exactly the best for you all through the bag. Probably pretty small. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm... I, I love Cobra golf clubs. I love being on staff. They've been absolutely fantastic to me for eight plus years. But I have some other things in there that are, you know, it's it's a little more niche product for me. Mm -hmm. That that mini driver, there's nothing else like it out there. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I've, I had to go with that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if, if Cobra listens to this podcast and they go, well, we've got to have something and he, they're going to build me a, a mini driver that's, you know, bigger size. I'm, I'm all for it. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm all for it. I don't have that kind of pull. So that is not <laughs> going to happen. Um, 
and then when it comes to wedges, I just, I, I, I love wedges, and I throw them in, I throw them out, I throw them in, I throw them out. Um, and putter. Kind of goes with that, too. Yes. Well, that's <laughs> that's a, that's just, that whole thing is <laughs> off on a wavelength of its own. Um, so, you know, I try to put Cobra product in at least some of the time yeah. with the wedges, you know, and I will try again in 2024 with, a, with another set and, yeah. and see how it goes. Um, but, yeah, it's... Play what you want, mm -hmm. but play what works best and find out what works best and try to have an open mind. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if you go in that, that you're just going to get tailor-made, then go ahead and just get tailor-made. It's fine. Like, tailor-made makes great products. Callaway makes great products. Cobra makes great products. Bing makes great products. Titleist makes great products. You're, it's not like yeah. you're going to destroy your golf game by going one brand all the way through. It does make it a little easier to choose a bag that way. It does, um, <laughs> because usually people want to have a branded bag for what their golf clubs are, and it can get confusing if you've got a Titleist driver and a tailor-made three wood and Callaway irons and Ping wedges. You know, what bag do you get? First world problems there. Yes, uh, trying to figure out yeah. what bag you get. Yeah, but no, seriously, it's uh, play what you want, but check it out. Yeah, hit, hit some things and and just 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 confirm that that it is the best thing for you. And even if it's just aesthetics, right? Exactly. I, there's, there's Captain Aesthetic that. says if you just really like the way something looks better than anything else, you're gonna play better with that's, it because you like looking at it. That's the piece of this. Like, there might be a player listening or watching to this, or watching this that they love the way every Titleist club looks. Yeah. And so, ah, go play all Titleist then. You know. Go with uh, it. There's. There's a confidence factor that's involved here as well, but golf is um, too hard to be looking down at a golf club, going, "Boy, I really don't like the way this thing looks." I mean, think all about right, it. here we go. That's yeah. <laughs> hey, let's hit a let's hit a good shot with this ugly ugly golf club. <laughs> not gonna happen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, At least not consistent. Well, that was this was good. Yeah, I, I this was a good uh, discussion. I think a lot of good points made, both about um, you know I think <laughs> your club junkiness of switching in and out and uh but then also the the new reviews on some of the stuff this year more stuff coming yes and then um for that. i think that's some good fitting insight for those individuals yeah. that asked um about some key items that i know are common questions that yeah our team gets quite a bit so yeah. and if you have any questions please drop them below in the comments on the youtube video for sure and We'll get to those and answer them either directly right there, probably directly right there, but also we'll add, we'll add them to a future uh, podcast as well, and we'll get to those. So, Kevin, uh, we begin the week of creating content here with the podcast. So thank you for thanks. joining. Thanks for having me back.